Perfecting the Past Colonial Revival Quilts is an exhibition of quilts selected from the collection of the International Quilt Study Center at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I had the privilege to serve as curator for this exhibition, which was the culminating project for my master's degree in textile history with an emphasis in quilt studies. Funding from the Nebraska Humanities Council helped to cover some of the costs of the exhibition itself, including brochure, photography and printing, and public programming, including the lecture given by Dr. Virginia Gunn. The exhibition looks at how the colonial revival influenced quilt makers in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The colonial revival was a cultural movement that deeply impacted American society. There are no set dates for the movement, but scholars typically agree that the movement was at its strongest in the United States from the 1880s into the 1930s. Several factors converged at the end of the 19th century that created major changes in the American lifestyle. The shift from goods produced by hand-skilled labor in homes and farms to factory-produced goods caused many people to think that society was becoming depersonalized. Increasing numbers of immigrants to the United States created fear among the country's current citizens, while the number of people moving from the country to the city created an urban environment that was frightening to many Americans. As the United States moved into the 20th century, the modern age brought new ideas, technology, and developments that left Americans both hopeful and fearful of the future. In responding to the challenges presented by industrialization, immigration, and urbanization, 19th century Americans chose to look backward to the time of their colonial ancestors. Colonial times came to be upheld as the golden days of American society, when life was simple and people had lived noble lives. Americans living in the late 19th century used the colonial past as a foothold of strength, a way to gain reassurance that they could survive in their own century just as their ancestors had survived before them. The colonial revival movement that flourished in late 19th and early 20th century America was based on these same beliefs. The movement capitalized on the appreciations Americans had for the past. The 14 quilts featured in the exhibition reflect the complexity of the colonial revival. Colonial Revival quilts are not easily defined or categorized. The quilts chosen for the exhibition show this diversity and include both pieced and appliqued and embroidered quilts. They are both machine sewn and hand sewn and illustrate the various sources of inspiration that served to inspire Colonial Revival quilt makers. Five inspiration categories were established for the exhibition. The purpose of the categories was to show the varied sources that quilt makers drew their inspiration from when making quilts. The five categories were 19th century patterns, woven coverlets, the four block quilt style, needle craft traditions, and colonial history. The three quilts in the first category, the feathered star, wreath of roses, and lone star quilts, are all based on patterns that had origins in the 19th century. The maker of the feathered star, Mary Caroline Olds, is believed to have made the quilt around 1895 for her son Arthur's marriage. The wreath of roses was made circa 1930 to 1950, and the maker probably used a commercial pattern or kit. There were a variety of floral patterns available in the early 20th century. These patterns often featured stylized flowers and more modern colors, as opposed to the floral applique of the 19th century that featured red and green, darker colors of red and green that were done in an applique style. The Lone Star quilt was made by Christine Heidi Sorensen in the 1930s. She purchased the fabrics for this quilt from her local J.C. Penney store in Grand Island, Nebraska. Christine prized this quilt and used it as a spread in her guest bedroom for a number of years. The second category for the show, Woven Coverlets, features the three quilts pictured here. The Burgoyne Surrounded, Pine Tree, and Nine Patch Variation. Woven coverlets were a common feature used in 19th century homes, and the patterns found in coverlets were easily transferred to quilts. Nine patch, the geometric patterns found in the Burgoyne Surrounded and the Nine Patch Variation are similar to the patterns often found in overshot and double weave coverlets. While the pine trees featured in the pine tree quilt resemble the pine trees often found in the borders of jacquard woven coverlets. The third inspiration category, four block style quilts, features two quilts, the English Rose Variation and the Wig Rose Variation. 
Traditional four block quilts were popular from about 1850 to around 1900 and were typically done in a red and green applique style and a white background. Both of the quilts in this category fuse elements of both tradition and moder modernity. The maker of the English rose, Olive McClure Cook, was in her 70s when she made this quilt in 1939. Olive chose to use sateen fabrics in modern colors of apple green, yellow, orange, red, and pink. The quilt design shows the independent and creative style of this maker, while the Rig Rose quilt has both exquisite quilting and applique work. Colonial Revival tastemakers valued the workmanship found in 19th century quilts and admired 20th century women who could emulate that work. The fourth category included four quilts, the Floral Bouquets, Basket of Flowers, Sampler Album, and Rose of Flowers. These quilts show the influence of needlework traditions, including crewel work, cross-stitch, and embroidery. The Floral Bouquets quilt has connections to embroidery patterns that were available in the early 20th century. Needlework patterns were being updated to meet modern tastes and included, included floral, floral wreaths, bouquets, and baskets of flowers. And these patterns were easily transferred to quilts, including the floral, bouquet, floral bouquets in this ex exhibition. The basket of flowers quilt seen here was made by Merle Gunnarsson and shows the popularity of embroidery in the early 20th century. Women embroidered everything from tea towels to toaster covers and the patterns were easily transferred to embroidered quilts as well. The sampler album consists of 20 cross-stitched samplers that were made into an individual quilt. These samplers were a popular form of colonial revival needlework in and of themselves. They were available for purchase in local dime stores and also from periodicals of the time, and included all the materials needed to create your very own colonial sampler. They were based on the samplers made in the early in the 18th and 19th centuries in the United States by young girls. The Vase of Flowers quote with its central medallion focus has connections to the Indian palampores, which were imported to England and the United States in the 18th century. Palampores often featured elaborate tree of motifs as their central focus, much as the vase of flowers serves in this piece as the central focus of this quilt. The three floral borders that are around the edge of the quilt were inspired by crewel work, a form of needlework that uses wool threads to create floral images and meandering vines. The final category, colonial history, is represented by two quilts, the colonial history quilt seen here and the colonial lady. The colonial history quilt features embroidered blocks, each depicting a scene from colonial history, including the Spanish settlement of, of, from the 1500s, early Viking exploration, and events from the Revolutionary War. Ruby Short McKim designed pattern series which appeared in newspapers such as the Omaha World Herald and the Kansas City Star in the 1930s. The colonial lady quilt with, with its distinctive black and white ladies is reminiscent of the black and white silhouettes that were a popular part of colonial revival interiors. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of the Colonial Revival and its influence on quilt makers. The Colonial Revival was a complex movement and the quilts featured in this exhibition, perfect, Perfecting the Past, clearly reflect the diversity of both the movement and the various sources that served to inspire quilt makers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.